Welcome to ECU Flash Training Part 13. We're going to be checking out how to work with our spark timing and our knock control. We're going to find that we have two different spark timing tables to deal with. We have a high octane table and a low octane table. We also have some ignition modifier tables for intake air temperature and engine coolant temperature. They're going to be further refining how much spark timing to deliver to our engine against our main spark timing tables. Now in addition to this, we're going to find that we have closed loop knock control that's going to be going on at any given engine RPM or load. That's going to be there to protect the engine. We'll find if we start to have knock activity, it's going to generate a knock count. With enough knock counts, it's going to start to reduce our ignition timing and then ultimately move from our high octane table into our low octane table. I'm going to be explaining how the ignition timing tables work, how the knock control works. We're going to be learning what to log in EvoScan and then moving into our Megalog viewer, evaluating some full throttle pulls so we know what to look for for false knock or real knock and be able to make our timing changes accurately during our tuning process. We're going to have a lot to learn, so let's jump into this video so we can check this out. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to be taking a look at working with our spark timing tuning and our knock control in EVO 8 and EVO 9 ECUs. So what I have open here to begin this tutorial is going to be our 9417 files. It's going to be a math based file and a speed density file for an EVO 8. And then we also have 8859 files. These are going to be the EVO 9 file, and this is specific to the speed density. Uh, the reason why I have my math based and my speed density based file open uh, for my EVO 8 here is because the timing and the tuning, so all the spark timing tables and all the tuning we're going to be doing is going to be identical between a mass airflow calibration file and a 3D VE speed density file in our Tefer V7. Now, if we're going to be using an EVO 9, or tuning an EVO 9 with our Tefa V7, we'll find that the 3D VE table, so the speed density and the mass airflow style ROM files are identical. But if we're comparing our 8859 or EVO 9 files to our EVO 8, there are going to be differences in the tables, slight differences. So sometimes you might have some tables here in the EVO 8 and not in an EVO 9, and we might find that we have some tables in the EVO 9 and not in the EVO 8. So I want to go pop between these two as we're just going through the calibrations um, and, and talking about our different spark timing tables so we're very clear depending if you're tuning an EVO 8 or EVO 9. So let's go in here to our EVO 8. Let's talk about this first. Um, again, it won't matter if we're in a math or 3D VE speed density file. Those are going to be identical. We're going to move down here under our current ROM metadata and I have a special section here dedicated to spark timing and knock control. So I went into my directory and my XML codes and I paired these together. So this is how I like to look at my, my ROM structure when I'm going in and reviewing the tables. So we can find here under spark tuning, we have a whole bunch of spark timing tables. So everything in here can alter the spark timing to the engine. And then we also have in our knock control parameters here, things that can alter the way the knock control is going to work. So we're gonna go over how the knock control works, um, the things that we need to data log, how we can know if we have real knock or false knock and changes we can make and update into our knock control tables here to ensure that we don't have false knock reported, which is a really, really big deal when you're tuning your Evo, um, whether it's an Evo 8 or Evo 9. As soon as you put cams in or a different clutch and flywheel, or if you've changed the engine internals, that can change the way the calibration scale has been uh, set up here and designed in the Mitsubishi ECU, and we're essentially going to have to recalibrate it, similar to the idea of we're changing um, our camshaft design and we know that we have to recalibrate um, our mass airflow curve or our speed density VE table. So kind of the same idea. So let's just jump into our spark tuning here and talk about our different tables we have to work with. So the primary tables we have to worry about are going to be our high and low octane tables. Um, we're going to find that the tables here, they're going to be based on engine RPM here on the left axis, and then on the top axis it's going to be based on engine load. Specifically, it's going to be based here on KPA or the MAP sensor reading. Now, we've talked about our speed density calibrations when we were going in and setting them up and setting all of our MAP sensor details up. I'm going to skip that in this video. I'm going to assume at this point you will understand how to set up your MAP sensor. I provided all that data for you. Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you want to see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you want to go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here and you don't want to miss any of the videos are going to be releasing on this channel, so make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.